Now, this is Richard Wolf and RJ, uh, why do I want to call him Audre? And RJ uh, Esco. And they are having a discussion about guns in the economy. Now, we all know recently with the school shooting in Texas, there's been uproar again about do we need some type of gun reform? Do we need some type of gun control? And the thing that I really like about Richard Wolf is that he can take any issue that you throw at him and he will reference how the economy fits in with this. He'll bring up the economic point about that issue, something that sometimes we may not focus on, right? Even if it's a social issue. When he came on last year, one of the questions I asked him was about gentrification. He brought it back to the economic reason for it. So that's one of the things I like about Richard Wolf. So he's on RJ uh, Esco's The Zero Hour Show, and he's asked about gun economics. And this is important. I want you to hear how he ties in advertising and the economy for the reason why we have the issues with guns in this country. Listen to this. This is really good. Um, urban urban populations also compared to the rest of the world are heavy buyers and users of guns. So it seems to me there's kind of a, a valuation that uh, many segments of our society put on guns as an object, as a symbol. Uh, do you get what I'm driving at? Yep. Yep. For me, um, the way I come at the points you raised is, and I admit this, I am an economist, so I'm always wondering uh, about the economic dimensions of things. And one of the things that characterizes our capitalist system uh, in a way that nothing in other systems has ever been comparable um, is the industry we call advertising. In other words, in capitalism, we teach students that the system produces what people want. And indeed, we're supposed to admire capitalism because, in part, it produces what people want. And yet, to be honest, and, and lots of honest people know this, capitalists long ago stopped being satisfied with the role of producing what people want. And they went into the business in a very big way of producing not only the goods that people want, but the wants that people have so that they can make money producing the goods that are profitable because they have shaped the wants that create the market for those goods. In other words, a modern capitalist works on both sides of the market, on the supply and the demand to get the profitable outcome he wants. All right? With that in mind, consider the remarkable success that advertisers have had. Uh, I remember once uh, having an advertiser explain in great detail to a group of economists how his firm had helped a particular automobile company sell automobiles. Yeah, and this is something that advertisers are really good at. Uh, for those who don't know, if you're like new, you may not know this, uh, but I majored in broadcast journalism. And a part of that major, I actually had to take classes on advertising, public relations, like it's, it's all connected, right? So one of the things about advertising is that you have to reel the customer in. So you need like catchy phrases or slogans. Uh, you need an ad, something that's vibrant, something that really jumps out and grabs their attention, whether it's tugging at their heartstrings, whether it's uh, making them feel excited about what you're talking about, something that will get them out of their seat off the couch and say, I have to have that. So advertisers are very effective at luring the customer in and making the customer crave the product or the brand that they're trying to sell. And the really good advertisers, they, they'll sell a lot of product because of that. Now listen to what he says about how the advertising industry also has an effect when it comes to guns in this country. And I'm, I'm almost quoting now what he said to us in the room. He said, we learned that the thing to do was to dra uh, drape 
a half-naked young woman across the fender of a car. And we all kind of looked perplexed, and then he quickly explained, because in those days, this is some years ago, the overwhelming uh, market for that particular car was known to be young males. And therefore, the idea was you put the half-naked young lady on the fender because in the mind of the buyer, buying the car kind of might get you the lady too. In other words, it was an associative uh, kind of logic. And then he proceeded to explain to us Advertisers are really good at playing on people's emotions, their desires, and their wants. They're really good at that. And it's true, right? Like, sex sells. It's an old saying, but it's true. Sex does sell. So if you have a commercial with a nice car, yeah, if a guy's watching it or whatever, I don't want to say just guy, like, you know, not everybody is straight or whatever. But anyway, if you have a commercial with a car and someone's watching that commercial, yeah, they might think, wow, that's a nice car. But if you add in something extra to it, like I said, sex sells, you put on a half naked woman laying on top of that car, then it gives them the impression that, oh, wow, I really have to get that car. And if I get that car, maybe I might be able to get someone like that. They're really good at it. How this kind of principle was used across the board that the reason you see a popular can of uh, soda pop in the hands of a lovely, excited a young group of people on the beach is that the buyer wants to be part of a happy young group of people at the beach and will associate buying a can of whatever the soda was with somehow gaining entree into this uh, happy group at the beach. All right. The ones that are the worst, you guys, are the ads for, um, <laughs> they used to show, I don't know if they show them anymore, I haven't seen them in a while, these ads for like herpes, the herpes like medication, and they would show like the actors like biking, they're like mountain climbing, they're like going on all these different dates, and they're like, I got my life back after taking such and such. And I remember thinking to myself, like, dude, I don't do all that, and I don't have herpes, okay? So they give you the idea that if you are that person and you do have herpes and you take that medication, is it Valtrex? Yes. Okay, Valtrex. Thanks, Saul. You take that medication, all of a sudden, you're still going to have this active life. You're still going to have an active dating life. You're just going to be living through the moon. And I'm like, I don't do all that right now. And I don't. So this is really funny. Like, but yes, they give you the illusion, the idea that your life is going to be that way if you have that product. It's true. If that's understood, then now watch the logic of the corporations that make handguns, rifles, shotguns, and all the rest of the killing machinery uh, that we see used all the time. They had to solve the same advertising problem. The market for guns was probably mostly hunters, because that's what it is in Canada and places like that. People for whom hunting is either a source of food or a, a sport or however they understand it. But that's a very limited market because that's a very limited number of people. So the yep. advertisers were called in and they were asked to do what they do. Can you associate the gun with something else that large numbers of people will want? Because then here it comes, you guys. Pay attention to this. They'll buy the gun to get whatever that other thing is because the gun per se is not attractive to them. Indeed, guns tend to frighten people. Guns are dangerous. Guns have a lot of negatives that would make people shy away. Okay, they had an ally. They found an ally. The automobile companies didn't out find such a lovely ally, but the gun companies did. The National Rifle Association, the NRA. Yep. And this was, if you like, 
a marriage made either up there or down there, depending on your point of view. And, and now they figured out how they could solve their advertising problem. Associate the gun with security. You will be safer if you have a gun because a gun frightens other people, you see. Yep. Safety, security. Those are some of the things that they use. And then so people will think that they'll think, well, maybe I should get a gun because then that way I'll feel safe. I'll feel secured. I can't tell you how many people I've known that have said things like that, that they'll feel safer if they had it. That comes from advertising. And they will leave you alone. They will not threaten you, your family, your home, your property, whatever else. Number two, having a gun is a very manly thing to do. Mm -hmm. Since the overwhelming buyers of guns are men in this country, have always been, and they are now. Just like the overwhelming use of a gun is by a man, and the overwhelming majority number of people killed by a gun are men. Women are not, uh, uh, they're not in there. They're just not. That's important for people to know. I'm glad that he mentioned that. Usually in cases of gun violence, it's usually men that are affected, not so much women. So who are the gun manufacturers trying to market to? They're mainly trying to market to men. So now when you see those ads, whether it's on TV, whether it's in a magazine, you'll remember that. That's their audience. That's their niche. That's their demographic. That's who they're going after. That's their target. Now listen to the rest of this. Not in this story. So the second thing was it's very manly. And here you have to remember uh, the Marlboro cigarette man, you know, the kind of lonesome fellow up there on the horse and yeah. all of the imagery uh, that you're very, very uh, manly. Then there's something which is not so manly, but more you're a tough guy. No one's going to mess with you because yep. you uh, possess guns and you have them on the rack in the back of your pickup truck, etc. And I just want to add to the music industry also advertised guns. I, I don't know if everyone remembers or if everyone was around back then, but especially like during the 90s, the music industry also advertised them. They had music artists, they had rappers, they had, you know, uh, rock stars also doing that too, making you, making you feel like, excuse me one second, <clears throat> I am seriously congested, uh, making you feel like you were tough if you had a gun. It's not just commercials, like they do it through music, movies, TV. Et cetera. So you had the NRA beating the bushes, building this, and then the, the gun companies could come in with additional advertisement. And, and you did what? You, in a brilliant move, and I don't take it away from them, it's, it's evil what they do, but it's brilliant how they go about it. Uh, they were able to, to see that there were sociological issues that made it easy to sell the gun if you associated it with security, manliness, and tough guy. Why? And here comes the big one. Here comes. Because the capitalist economic system was savagely undermining the security, the manliness, and the toughness of particularly, but not only, but particularly adult white men. They were it always goes back to capitalism. Let's hear that part again, at least that little short part. I'm not going to keep you guys for too long, but let's just hear that part because that part's important. I hope I didn't go back too far. It, it easy to sell the gun if you associated it with security, manliness, and tough guy. Why? And here comes the big one. Because the capitalist economic system was savagely undermining the security, the manliness, and the toughness 
of particularly, but not only, but particularly adult white men. They were the ones who had the highest salaries. Therefore, in this country, whether their wages or salaries were very high or just high, in capitalism, the more successful a worker is to get higher wages, the greater the incentive for the employer to get rid of the worker, to replace yep. him with a machine or to move production out of the country or to bring in a cheaper substitute laborer. When these things really got going, particularly in the 1970s and in the half century since then, what you were doing was attacking the self-concept of white adult males. You were- Boom. And at the end of the day, that is the fear of what is being threatened. That's the fear. Oh no, I might lose, I might lose all this, this freedom, this, this privilege that I have. That's the kicker. It all goes back to capitalism and a white supremacist society. He hit the nail on the head. Noche said, professor's going to profess. <laughs> all right, let him finish here. You were taking away their job security. You were taking away their job. You were taking away their future. You were taking away their capacity to be the provider of the household for the woman, to hold his head up high, to be a tough guy. I get paid what I'm worth, and that's why I get paid well, and that's why I get paid than other more than other people. All of that was taken away. Yep. And the white adult worker was deprived of his security, deprived of his job security, uh, deprived of his income, deprived of his social standing, and he was desperate. And into that desperation comes the gun manufacturer and his advertiser saying, here is a way to recoup your manhood, to recoup your power to recoup your toughness, your st have a gun, and not just have it, work really hard to get the right to carry it in the open where everyone can see what a tough guy you are uh, possessed of this uh, deadly weapon. And, you know, that's what advertisers do. Their job is not to investigate the morality or not their job is to sell whatever it is their client manufactures, and they figured out how to attach gun purchase to a desperate need uh, of a whole segment of the population, a yep. need that could not be, a, they can't get a, a good job, they're not available anymore. They can't get an adequate income, it's not available anymore, but they can go to the nearby Walmart and buy as many guns as they can fit uh, into whatever cabinet they keep them in and make themselves feel as though uh, there's something that they have. There's something where they're still able to express what has been taken away from them. So for to make them feel like they still have some type of power in a corrupt capitalist system. That's what it all comes down to. You guys can finish the rest of this um, interview. Now, this is on RJ Esco's. It's called The Zero Hour. Definitely check that out. All I have to say is that he's 100% on it. Like I said, like I did like those advertising uh, classes. We had different projects. We had to go out to businesses and try to create ads and storyboards to sell. And at the end of the day, what they would always tell us is your main goal is to sell. You're not supposed to think about as the advertiser, they didn't want us to really think about the, the morality. They didn't want us to think about people's feelings. If people would be offended if they, you got to understand this was years ago, right? So that we were not supposed to think about that. All we were supposed to do was to sell 
the product to sell the brand. And I feel like Richard Wolf really hit it like right out of the park with that. He really did a good job with that because it's important. Like that's what people think. Again, at the end of the idea, excuse me, at the end of the day, the idea is to make sure that you can maintain to hold on to some type of power, but you can't lose all of it. That cannot happen. So where that's where a lot of, for a lot of people, the guns come in to maintain, to hold on to some type of power. That's what this is about.